Well, thank you very much indeed for uh, for inviting us uh, here to your offices in, in Brussels. And uh, I must say, I'm really looking forward to having this conversation uh, around reputation, um, how you see reputation and its role within TCS, and indeed, you know, what are the kind of things that are kind of occupying your mind in terms of uh, effective reputation management going forward. So, so thanks a lot. How would you describe your role as Chief Communications and Marketing Officer for Europe? Sure. Um, so I'm the Chief Communications and Marketing Officer in Europe for Tata Consultancy Services. And um, essentially what uh, my team and I do is uh, we're responsible for the company's brand and its reputation um, across Europe. There are three divisions which report into me. So there is the marketing division, which uh, supports our sales and looks at building our brand awareness. Uh, there's Co corporate communications, um, dealing with media outreach and increasingly a lot more on the social media side. And the third leg on this is uh, public affairs, which is our relationships with uh, government and, and bodies and which is of course extremely relevant uh, from the local context here in Brussels with the European institutions and so forth. Given the breadth of what you've just described, what are some of the key challenges? The the key issues you face in carrying out your specific role? So, you know, part of our challenge has been really to sort of ramp up and uh, make sure our brand is in tandem with the growth of our business, in fact, ahead of the growth of our business. Um, I would say the second fundamental challenge has been that the field of um, communications and, and marketing itself um, has been seeing vast uh, and definitional change over the last, um, I would even say, if you look at the last decade. There's a lot of change brought on by uh, the whole digital revolution with be op operating in a faster world, in, in a more digital world, in a more connected world, uh, often new and unplanned issues hit you every day. So, you know, you're not sure if your agenda is always in your control, especially on the communication side. And when you consider that rate of growth and making sure that the brand is, as you put it, ramped up, um, are you always looking to articulate the brand in terms of explaining it to stakeholders and, and what TCS stands for? Is that a kind of ongoing process? Sure, uh, it, absolutely, but um, it, it's a different, uh, you know, it's a different battleground in each market. A different challenge, say, in the UK, which has um, sort of been our long-standing market. You know, we're a known entity. Our group has a lot of investments. It's the largest investor in the industry in the UK. So there, um, I think, the focus is more towards defining our business and talking about our issues. Whereas in a, in, a, in a newer market, it's really about uh, sort of uh, starting off telling your story and, and, and what your brand stands for. In your view, what is, the, um, yeah. what is the role of reputation in your specific sector? Well, I think for our business, uh, our reputation is uh, paramount. Um, if probably if, even if you ask our CEO and say, what's your biggest asset? Um, he's not going to talk about a physical asset. He may talk about our people assets, which is core to the, a business like this. But he certainly talk about a reputation as a as a primary asset. Um, if you if you um, sort of look at it in measurement terms, um, our company has a net promoter score of uh, nine point eight, which um, you as a connoisseur would know is uh, is uh, fairly remarkable uh, given the averages stay in the six or seven things. Uh, even recently, in a survey which was done of uh, 1,500 uh, CXOs, CEOs, CIOs, and so forth across Europe uh, on their satisfaction with companies in the IT services sector. We got rated as number one across, all across Europe. It's been for the two years in a row. So uh, obviously, our business is doing something right, and we have a great uh, partnership with our customers, which is why we get that. But um, it's extremely important because every new piece of business we win, uh, this is uh, one of the fundamental factors in it. If it's more business with an existing client and we do a lot of business growth with our existing clients, uh, it's because of our track record with them. You can call it reputation or a track record. But it's even more important when there's new business. So, you know, when a CIO of a company is signing off a 50 million euro deal to do work with them, uh, sure, you have your discussions and they do their research on you, but ultimately they do pick up the phone and call their peers and the CIO of another company saying, hey, you use these guys, what do you think of them? And therein, the word of mouth uh, reputation is crucial. And building on the point that you made about reputation um, as a driver of business, um, is that connected in the way in which you feel rep reputation differentiates 
TCS in the marketplace? Indeed, is, def is differentiation something that you, you, you think a lot about? No, ab absolutely. I think differentiation is key because uh, of uh, the uh, extremely competitive landscape which we operate in. There are many levers to differentiate yourself. Um, of course, uh, in, in this business where you're helping them uh, sort of uh, create their digital strategy and uh, strengthen their uh, information technology systems and so forth, uh, a large part of the differentiation is your ability to bring in the right solution to them, which they're looking for at the right uh, sort of parameters, whether it's how fast it needs to be implemented, the right team which can work for it, or um, the um, quality levels and so forth. But uh, also the repute where, uh, you know, say a client struggles to differentiate between multiple people who are bidding for your business, I think your reputation can and is a significant differentiator. Is that because there's something in the genesis of TCS or is that in a sense because you're keeping your finger on the pulse of what your customers need or, or is it indeed both? When we launched our current brand promise which is encapsulated in two words experience certainty meaning our customers um, can be assured that uh, whatever we are promising them gets delivered to them without fail. Um, it was done with on the back of a lot of research with our customers on you know why they were they choosing us why did they like working with us with analysts in the industry with um, even journalists and other stakeholders and uh, that research led us to some powerful insights on you know why we were good as a business and that led to our our, our whole uh, branding strategy and our uh, architecture behind our positioning it's interesting uh, i'm aware of uh, uh, experience certainty and i'm just wondering whether that the derivation of that uh, statement or positioning is in some way a reaction to the fact that sometimes consultants will come in and make promises that they don't necessarily keep. Um, it's linked to that. So, so if you look at it from, consul from consulting, in, especially in the information technology sector, traditionally um, there's a very high project failure rate. Uh, on, on industry average, um, it's as high as 60% at times. So uh, therein, the ability to you know to create success consistently is 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 something which is important, and increasingly it's become even more and more important because the days where companies could you know do large ERP implementations and fail are gone. Your next bet on technology uh, may be uh, kind of an existential decision for your business. You may not, may or may not exist based on what bet you made in your technology to engage with your customers or to you know, manage your own organization and your supply chain and, and your product channels. In many ways, it's easy to make a promise uh, to say, I'll do X, Y, or Z. Uh, given your role as a leader within the marketing and communications function, how do you ensure that the promise is actually aligned to the delivery? Sure. I mean, I think, um, I think that's, that's, that's a constant endeavor. Because um, the other angle in our business is we have 318,000 employees across the world, right? So whatever the marketing or the communication team does in terms of its own activities to promote, build a brand, tell the story is important on one side. But these 318,000 employees are on a daily basis um, having millions of conversations with our customers and stakeholders. And each one of those conversations is either promoting our brand or destroying it. So the alignment uh, of the general employee in the company towards our external uh, activities in branding, storytelling, etc. Is, is, is vital and it has to be extremely close. The business you're in is, is important to us. At times we've used some good services from uh, Ipsos Mori as well to, to get, get, get some input from our st uh, stakeholders and what they think of us and whether it is in alignment with what uh, we see as our brand promise. about the kind of integration collaboration of different functions within the organization um, marketing with communications communications and, and HR etc um, and I'm just wondering is this something that's going on in TCS as well this movement towards a more integrated collaborative approach in order to maximize the impact of reputation it's certainly true in TCS and certainly true in uh, our industry in fact uh, interestingly um, some time back the um, the editor-in-chief of the Holmes Report, which is a PR publication, had, had done a story on this, um, you know, talking about the integration between marketing and communications and what would it lead to. And uh, based on that story, I decided to do a, sh a, a small poll 
with uh, sort of my peers, communications heads and so forth of other companies to see how are things going in, the, in, in, in their companies and what do they see the future as? And they were given multiple options, which was, you know, communication and marketing are going to remain separate or are they going to get integrated or will communication become a part of marketing or will marketing become a part of communications, et cetera, et cetera. Um, interestingly, about 65% of them came back saying that uh, in the future they see a deeper and deeper integration between the functions. And I said it's true in our industry, it certainly is. If you look at most of the big players in the industry, uh, they have uh, integrated their functions in communications and marketing in particular. Um, some of them um, have actually had their former communication directors become their CMOs. Uh, in, in, in our company, you know, I, when I came in for, first into Europe, I was the communication director for, for TCS. And then uh, in due course, I was um, also given the responsibility for the marketing department. Um, which has been a gain to us, I think, uh, certainly. Because the ability to manage things in a holistic way is important. That's, that's one aspect. Secondly, since the channels and the audiences and the audience behavior has changed, uh, and requiring a lot more work on the digital side, on the social side, I think skills from both sides of the table combine very, very well together in running a more integrated campaign on, 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 on any, anything which you are driving. Um, the storytelling skills from communication fits in really well with the campaign skills which is traditionally rested in marketing. You mentioned at the start of the uh, uh, start of our interview that you felt your CEO had probably put uh, reputation down as, uh, as you know, the number one business asset the organization has. Do you think that view is consistent across the entire kind of leadership team within within TCS? I certainly think it's true across the board. Um, I don't know if you do a survey on it or otherwise, but I think I, I, I do. I'm, I am familiar with familiar with the Ipsos um, uh, survey which you do of the captains in the industry, and even that threw up uh, an important point, which is the, uh, the 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 board level people you polled came up saying that when they looked at doing business with someone, what was the most important attribute to them, and it was trust. Now, you know, you can choose the word whichever way you want. You can say reputation, you can say trust, you can choose brand. But it's reflecting the same concept that, um, you know, uh, it is important for businesses, especially in today's uh, trust deficit scenario in, in many, many markets where traditional institutions have seen a decline in trust, whether it is on the political front or it's in uh, institutions, uh, media, etc that um, it is important for the customers in the end to be working with someone you, you trust with and therefore your reputation is, is crucial. So Abhinav, I've given your uh, role and given your experience, I mean, what, what do you see as the essential characteristics and, and from, uh, uh, you know, feel free to answer that from the point of view of whether they're personal characteristics or professional characteristics, but what are the essential characteristics that a you know, chief communications and marketing officer needs to succeed in an environment like TCS and indeed in any uh, large corporate environment? Uh, one of the regional CEOs I, I worked with in the past had a very interesting observation on this as well because he was sitting and doing a review on things which we were doing. And um, he looked up to me and said, you know, when I look at your role and how it's growing, um, I see my role as a CEO very similar to what your role is. The only difference is at the end of the day, I have revenue and profitability responsibility. But on every other front, whether it is the understanding of the strategy of the company, the risks which you face, the market, the ability to tell our story or to manage crises, et cetera, et cetera, your role is very similar to what I need to do, right, and, and supporting me. And, and, and that's grown. Yeah, do, you, do you think that that, that that individual is increasingly likely to be sitting at the top table? Yeah, increasingly, yes. I think um, in, in lighter vein, um, I was again asked earlier that w what could be uh, a sort of uh, a parallel role for which could describe the today's role of a chief communication officer. And the answer I gave was a consigliere to a mafia boss, perhaps. The same relationship with the CEO of a company. Half joking, but you know, uh, what the consigliere did was um, you need to be available to advise on a myriad of issues while you're managing your own things, um, have a mind which um, uh, evaluates risks, promotes the, the cause of the organization, um, in the ability to deal with legal aspects and other things and so forth. But 
going back to your question on whether the role is increasing in prominence and getting a seat on the table, um, increasingly it is getting a seat on the table, undoubtedly, and, and I see that in my peer network. If we think of this thing, uh, reputation management, which in many respects is, is a very sort of amorphous process in a, in a sense, a million and one things make up reputation management. But given, but given that, what do you see as the essential kind of building blocks of an effective reputation management process? It's a good question. I think um, what the one, one important thing from the reputation management point of view is to, that you need to look at it holistically. Um, organizations which have tried to isolate it, which is saying, okay, there's reputation management important for me, let me create a chief reputation officer who sits on the side and does something and somehow my reputation is being managed, have more often failed in, the, in those endeavors. All right. um, where it starts to work is that when you can engage with it holistically. And in today's world, it's important to be socially relevant in whatever you do. Right? So whether it is uh, um, uh, your recruitment process, whether it's the next product you're launching, whether it is how you source in your supply chain, uh, all of these have an impact on your reputation. And therefore, making sure that the whole organization is uh, involved in promoting and protecting the company's reputation is, is crucial. It almost sounds like, given the pace of change and, you know, the, in a sense, the dynamic nature of, 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 of your environment and, and uh, the speed with which new developments come along, that um, in a sense, it's a case of not giving in to the temptation to take too fixed a view or f too fixed a point of view on any given uh, issue. Is that true? I, agility is key. Agility is key. Um, which does not mean you don't do things um, you know, to the depth they need, need to be done, but then the ability to transform yourself quickly is, is crucial. Is you need to stay nimble. This kind of se sector perspective even further. I mean, let's, let's let's fast forward right to something like 2020 or so. I mean, what's your sense of, you know, if I put it that way, what the world will look like then? Well, 15 years is far ahead, but I think um, if you take a fundamental view from our sector, uh, we're extremely optimistic about the future, um, for the reason that one, fundamentally, more and more technology is being used in everything. Whether it's a car, if you look at a car today versus a car uh, a few years ago, a car is more and more of a computer, given all the sensors it has, the information system it has, the GPS, connectivity with your phones, and then as the next generation of potentially driverless cars comes out, they are they're, they're, they're computers. And um, overall, while technology tends to both evoke um, a lot of um, you know, fans and support and technophiles, also on the other end of the spectrum, it evokes um, criticism that it's changing things. But overall, it's, it's, it, is a, it is a force for good. Um, ultimately, technology is in the, in the hands of people, and like any other tool, it's, it's how you use it. And do you think the societal expectations of big companies will continue to increase you know, when assessing an organization? You know, the magnifying glass, uh, do you think that will continue to be kind of placed over organizations in terms of their behavior? Uh, the way they conduct business and so on. Well, you know, when it comes to customers in any business, uh, a customer's expectations always go up. I mean, I, I'm not aware of too many businesses where a customer's expectations are declined with time. They go up and, uh, you know, businesses get better at what they do and they, they offer more value to them and that's it's just a chain of, you know, where you are on that, um, keeping up with it. So that's crucial. The other thing is, yes, I think uh, in terms of the license to operate and the reputation, it's more and more important, even for the largest companies in the world. Great. Thanks very much indeed. That was, that was really excellent. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Milorad. Pleasure always.